Aha! This is Laborts, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. I start with the face. If the face is good, everything else will be alright. That's what Granny Laborts always says, and she knows what she's talking about, because if you got mumps at the age she has, ah, you are in trouble. I apply a few thin layers of Night Questor Flesh, leaving the eyes and lips black. The details are quite small, so use a pair of magnifying glasses or lamp to help your eyes. I think it's best to paint the eyes at this stage. We don't have any highlights on the skin, so we can't make any mistakes on the skin, right? I use some good old eyes yellow for the white parts. Her left eye is a bit tricky. Maybe I miss the eyelids or there is a microscopic mode line, but it's totally paintable, okay? And uh, remember to leave that nice black rim on the eyeballs to have some eyeliner effect going for her. As always, I use a micron pen for the iris. And uh, you would think it's super easy to do the iris this way. Well, if you are that smart, why am I screwing it up? See? <laughs> So maybe you are not that smart, but I had to redo the iris and made her look in the other way. Now the eyes look okay. It's time to work on the skin. I use a warmer skin tone and uh, thin layers to build up the highlights over the cheeks, nose and mouth area. We are painting a woman, so we need to have soft gradients over the face. Think of the major highlights like an upside down triangle on the center of the face and you would like to have soft blends around the edges. If you paint female faces like that, you will have nice results, and if not, I will slap on your tiny hand. Let's reduce the highlight areas a bit by mixing a bit of ice yellow to the red skin flesh. Thin layers again. I'm not glazing to blend in this color, so you need to aim for a consistency that behaves the same way. The value difference between the colors are not that high, so you could easily nail these parts without some extra blending effort. With a very diluted glaze, I give her cheeks a little bit of red. Only two coats. If your rug looks a bit tipsy in the process, you use too much. I also covered her lower lip with word barrels red uh, off camera. For the green parts of the suit I used Luperca green. The first highlight color is intermediate green. I used the base layer consistency for the highlights and thinned down to a glaze to blend it in. The green parts of the suit are quite saturated flat green. I can't really tell the fabric that uh, they are made of, but I wanted to make it look like it has a satin shine. I left a bigger portion darker, so our mid-tone will stay as a dark green color. I went back with a glaze of Luperca Green as part of my back and forth glazing routine to make sure that the suit looked smooth like Granny's butt cheek. I wipe off the excess from the brush on a paper towel and move the Luperca Green from the intermediate green area to the Luperca Green area. I probably did like 10-15 coats and uh, had a lovely conversation with Granny about the pimples on her back in the meantime and I made sure that I wait between every layer to dry before applying the next one. For the base of our yellow I used Parasite Brown. Yellow is always tricky to paint because the pigment has very poor coverage. With Parasite Down, we can have a very decent coverage and it's uh, going to work great for our shadow halftones, so I evenly cover everything with uh, Parasite Brown, not leaving any shadow areas. I 
Grab the airbrush for my main shadow tones. Nagarot Knight will be perfect for this and I add 8 drops of thinner to the airbrush cap and the brush full of paint. The compressor is set to 3 bar. I give it a good mix with the brush and uh, pinch the needle and pull back the trigger to mix it in the nozzle area as well. I'm aiming the airbrush from below to create the shadows organically. Yellow and purple are complementary to each other, so it will look nice and harmonious. I go back with scrap gun to fix some of the areas where I sprayed purple where I didn't intend to. I use a thinner consistency so I can blend in those parts easily. With that I have a nice foundation for my yellow parts of the suit and I can work my way up using yellow in the next step. I mix some yellow to the scrap gun and use layering to build up the yellow color. We need to cover around 50% of the surface so that our mid-tone will read as yellow. Regarding the highlight placement, I take a second and look at the angle of the shapes. The belly part is in a negative angle compared to the chest, so I leave bigger and darker shadows there. Her right leg is more forward and uh, facing more towards the light source, so I highlight that leg more and I leave the other one darker. So to put it, it's simply. If something faced towards the sun, I highlight it more. If something faced towards the ground, that's where the shadows go. Now with pure yellow, I reduce the highlight areas and build up the opacity of the yellow. It takes a couple of layers, but it's nothing crazy. You need like two to three layers uh, for what you see in the video and it's uh, super easy, okay? People usually end up having a hard time with yellow because they want to paint it over black or some uh, dark color. If you lighten up the layer where you'd like to paint the yellow, you'll have an easier time. I went back to the green parts and highlighted them a bit more with some lime green very small areas over the torso and I paint some vertical lines over the right thigh. For the hair and jacket, I cover everything with black red but using only thin layers. So the black primer somewhat shows through. I add multiple layers to the areas that are facing up and I cover less of the shadowy parts. I also cover the little pockets around her waist and I leave her uh, skunk patch in the middle black. After that I go in with scrap down and figure out the shapes of the hair and the jacket. I try to pick out all the raised parts of the jacket. When I highlight folds like this, I always try to end my brush strokes in a very thin line. So that way we don't really need any blending whatsoever because the highlights will look uh, more organic. On the hair, I highlight some of the curves and create bigger areas on the character's right side. contrast more, I mix some ice yellow to the red skin flesh and reduce the highlight areas. I go around the edges of the small pockets and apply more highlights over the shoulder area of the jacket. Cover the skunk patch with warfin grey. It's a grey with some lilac tone and it looks nice uh, with our saturated yellows. I apply two thin coats to cover the hair and I try to leave less paint in the recesses to make them look more defined. I 
mix some ICLO to the gray and uh, reduce the highlight areas towards the center of the banks. I follow the hair locks with my brush strokes so I can add a little bit of texture to the surface. For the last highlight I use ice yellow. I apply some shiny dots over the suit as well. To place these, try to imagine that the sun is somewhat above and a little bit to the left of the character. This way the highlights will look more consistent. I also added some stripes on the ties but I didn't like that so I will fix those later. I used red for her belt buckle and the X logo on the shoulder. I'm using a thicker consistency to overbrush the paint uh, on the shapes, so the paint won't flow into the recesses. The rest of the painting video is Patreon exclusive. If you'd like to access that content, you can find the link in the video description. So thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. A huge thanks to my Patreons who support these kind of videos, with special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes, Cold Blooded Dom, Trying to Paint Minis, Jonathan Mausner, Glitchy McCrash, Guillaume Belanger, Panoman45, Marco Coppola. If you like to support the work of Papala Boards, you can do that on Patreon, where you will find some exclusive content and PDF guides. I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt chick.